Okay, so we're on to a new part of the project. This is the front end of the aircraft. So this is where um, the glare shield will end up being. The glare shield will sit right under our windscreen. And then we have this piece under, which basically encloses the from the front end to the side skirts um, of the aircraft. And in order to do that, Titan gives us this piece of metal that's already traced and cut out for us. And I made a template out of paper just to make sure that it fits because we don't want to be cutting any metal um, before we know that this is what we want. So I put this thing in and it has some a couple inter interesting curves that many people did. And what we're gonna do is change the curve a little bit to give us a little bit more uh, clearance and clarity for a strip that we're gonna put, a light strip, LED light strip, um, which will be able to glow up things like our switches and different things like that. So uh, this is the panel that they gave us. We're gonna go in and make a little tighter curve until we're uh, three fourths of an inch away from our panel, which sits right down here. And that will give us enough clearance for that LED lighting strip to go in. We're gonna have a really nice clean curve right under the glare shield and it should be all good. So let's get to it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but this orange line that sits right here is where our panel meets this piece of metal. So what I need to do is measure three-fourths of an inch that I was talking about before. I need to measure that down away closer to the curve, and then I can cut that curve that goes all the way down, sitting three-fourths of an inch away from that curve. I'm not there yet, but I have to. Is this all set now? Is that where it's supposed to be? Yep. Pretty proud of this template. I just I got this template from like nothing. You see kind of building paper over it. Okay, so I just finished the template for uh, this is gonna be half of the side that we were just working on. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this on both sides, making sure that we have a little bit of excess just so we don't cut too short. We wanna make sure that we're too long and not too short. And yeah, so it turned out perfect. Um, working with paper is amazing because you can just add on pieces, take off pieces really easily. And what I'm gonna do is put this over to the metal, uh, duplicate this on both sides, making sure that we have more uh, material as excess and then we'll see how that fits.
All right, so we've got this upper skin now trimmed and fitted and in place here. The cockpit's really starting to actually come together, which is really exciting. Now, now that this is in place, we have to be able to put back in the support tubes that come from our canopy bow up here all the way down into the frame of the aircraft. The challenge is in actually finding the right location to drill that hole so that it passes through there. We tried a bunch of different techniques, but we've got a new one that I think is gonna work best. Um, we tried it use, originally using just like some uh, you know, paper templates and looking at it when those pipes were in there. But uh, what actually I think is gonna be the best is taking this scrap piece of tube with a smaller tube inside that can extend. I got it to fit right in here and this is very rigid, and then all I do is extend out that inner tube there. We know exactly where to mark the location. So um, hopefully that's all uh, gonna work out. I'm gonna mark it here, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go and cut those holes and see how it works. All right, so the technique with the telescoping tube in order to figure out where the down tubes are going to go through this upper D skin uh, weren't actually all that accurate. I thought it was working out great, but in the end, the left and the right didn't really match very symmetrically, and that left me wondering which one was actually right. So, came up with another technique that I think really is much more accurate. And that is, I took a single uh, piece of pipe, that's uh, this of aluminum tubing, like this, and actually cut the angle as it fits into this tube here. So it's exactly how this skin goes over. Put the skin in place over it, and then drew the oval. So as you can tell, when you're going through at an angle, the actual surface area that's going through is an oval like that. And when I did that uh, on both sides, I wound up with something that was completely symmetrical. They both looked at the same, and so it, I have a higher degree of confidence that this is the right place to cut our holes. So let's get to work now and actually cut those holes in the upper D skin and see how it fits. All right, one last step before it's time for final painting and then assembly of this D top skin is uh, I'd like to put two things in place that can kind of plan for the future. Um, one is gonna be a defroster vent. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it, but this is a good time to actually cut the hole and get something in there very easy if it's not gonna get used, but if I decide to plumb it into the HVAC system, it's very simple because all of that uh, uh, is already there. The ductwork is there, it's very easy to, to do, but it might be hard in the future to cut the hole. So I'm gonna get that hole cut in place and then also right over the radio stack in this area I'm gonna put a another hole there because that will give me um, two holes I can't put one right in the center because that's where the stringer is right down the center um, that forms the backbone of the forward part of the uh, uh, top of the uh, this whole cowling um, and so or the front of the fuselage and so I have an opportunity to put one thing on the left, one thing on the right. Well, the right is the radio stack. And so by putting a hole there, that will allow heat from the radio stack to vent up, which is really good for cooling the avionics. Uh, then the one on the left will be ducted if I choose to do that in the future. That will get hooked into a lever and allow me to divert air and have a defroster. So I'm gonna cut both those holes and then get this piece prepped, painted, and final assembled.
Well, there we go. Two cool holes. Very easy, very nice. Gonna do a great job. And then uh, all I'm gonna do is uh, attach this little duct piece to it, and then I'll have it sitting underneath to use in the future. Now that we've got this uh, top skin done, which turns into the overhang for our uh, instrument panel there, basically the lower part of our glare shield, I'm dying to try this lighting system that we have from UMA Instruments. So UMA Instruments makes a line of panel lighting that's electroluminescent, and meaning that it uses an AC inverter, and then you can get uh, dial lights for different instruments in the panel, and also these strips that actually will glow. And uh, they're just adhesive based and they come in a variety of different lengths. And we can use this just adhere to the bottom. And so even though we're at this early stage, now that this is on, I'm dying to just clamp it in place, power it up, see what happens. Let me try this out. All right, moment of truth. Let's turn out the lights and see how this really looks. All right, so another cool stage of building done on our Titan T51D Mustang. Very cool lighting system. Love the way that the panel is starting to come together here. And so until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices with tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, $100 hamburgers, so many things to do, including our webinars. So subscribe here to our YouTube channel for more updates. And until next time, blue skies.